Dear Janet, Dear Janet, I know how intimidating beginning the process of therapy with a new clinician can feel. I am grateful that you have felt comfortable letting me into your inner world thus far. And I'm optimistic that our time together will be beneficial. In our intakes, you reported experiencing feelings of anxiety and depression throughout your life. You also let me know that you have had traumatic childhood experiences. You are struggling with substance use, feelings of anger, as well as flashbacks and being easily startled. There are also periods of time periods when you do not feel present, do not feel present, and time may and even time feel distorted. May even feel distorted. You let me know that you have had these challenges with relationships, both platonic and romantic. And romantic. These are all challenges that I would love to work on together through the use of contemplative therapy, which is a framework that I use in my therapeutic practice. I want to ensure that you feel comfortable and aware of what we will be working on as well as the reasons behind the techniques. Contemplative practices include some aspects that you might be familiar with, as they have become more popular in the last few decades in Western society. I wonder what your familiarity is with meditation, mindfulness, yoga, and breathing exercises. Research has shown that therapies based in mindfulness can help treat anxiety, depression, and stress caused by trauma. There are different stages to these practices, and we will start off slow, not to worry. The idea here is that as humans, we all have patterns in our lives that we may not be consciously aware of. We also tend to have little control over our brains, often lost in thoughts and fantasies, while we are awake. In order to increase well-being and become healthier, we must train the mind to be more presently aware. We also must recognize patterns that are impacting our lives and keeping us from our greater potential. Our greater potential. You have an inner wisdom that is yearning to be accessed through periods of quiet. I want you to remember that you are in control and we will be going at your pace. Through contemplative therapy, you will be able to develop coping skills that will benefit all aspects of your life. You will feel more alive feel more and alive. in control of your life. Sincerely, Erica Oren. Dear Janet, dear, dear Janet, Janet, dear Janet, I understand that you have had several difficult encounters with therapists in the past. From my knowledge, your last therapist was male. I myself, as a client of therapy, have found it challenging and uncomfortable opening up to a male therapist when many of my issues have stemmed from sexism and prescribed restrictive gender roles. We are written off as hysterical, or that we do not know what is best for ourselves. How demeaning, how violating, and violating. The therapeutic relationship we will cultivate will be one based on collaboration and equality. You are the expert on your own lived experiences, and I do not seek to challenge this. Rather, I would love to give you a safe place, woman to woman, where you are able to process your experience living in a male-dominated patriarchal society. In our session, you told me that growing up you were fed the belief that women were less valued than men. You described your home environment to be quite, quite volatile, your mother and father fighting a lot, your father often drunk, making demands and pressuring your mother into having sex with him. I'm sure that further validated the notion that women should be passive, obedient, and exist to please their husbands. At a young age, this must have been painful and confusing to witness. Further, you described that from the ages of 4 to 14, you were sexually abused by your brother. This is a trauma that has gone unacknowledged by your family. Now that he is a breadwinner and a high-ranking military general, he is being put on a pedestal as the family hero. This continues to solidify the idea that a woman's experience is inferior to her male counterpart. Your relationships with men have been short-lived, ending in either betrayal and abuse or heartbreak and abandonment, just like your experiences with the men in your household. You have been constantly left to question whether to question or want to play. Through all of these painful life encounters, you have also shown great strength and perseverance. You are a woman living alone, capable of voicing her opinions and standing up for herself in distressing situations, such as in your work environment. 
you have come up with healthy ways to cope, such as nurturing your bonsai trees at home, and I would love to help you come up with other ways to meet life's demands head on. Some steps we can take include consciousness raising. This can either be done individually in session with me, or I also hold group meetings where women can get together and share their individual experiences and discuss the larger societal pressures we face day to day. It is a way to get involved and come up with avenues worth exploring to incite change. It is also a great way to meet people of similar life circumstances in the age group and foster healthy female friendships and camaraderie. You are not you alone. Are not alone. Your experience is one of generational and systemic pain and trauma, and there are supportive networks in your community that are at your disposal. Bibliotherapy. This is an analysis of gender roles. This might include some reading assignments to be done outside of session that we can then discuss. Think of it as a book club. This is a great tool to better understand the oppressive and restrictive force gender roles have had on our lives. You may find comfort that there are women who have written on this very topic, who are fighting for change and their voices to be heard. Reframing and relabeling. With all the great knowledge and comfort we have attained, we will then dive deep into your personal core beliefs and negative thoughts surrounding what it means to be a woman and hopefully come up with more adaptive, useful, and empowering ways to perceive yourself. Through a feminist lens, I believe we will be able to develop better coping skills that can be used socially, professionally, and personally. You will feel empowered feel and capable empowered of tackling of all of tackling life's difficulties with strength, with strength, awareness, and awareness. And insight. And insight. This therapeutic relationship will be one based on genuine connection and respect. I will be open with you just as I expect you to be open with me. Although I know this is a daunting journey to embark on, I am with you in solidarity. With gratitude. With gratitude. Tessa. Tessa. Hello, Janet. Hello, Janet. I wanted to follow up on our first session last week and address some concerns that you raised. I know that I'm the first black therapist that you have met with. You were concerned that I may be racially biased in my viewpoints towards you, particularly around two incidents that occurred and which were raised in our session. In the first incident, you sent notes home to the parents of the fourth grade children you teach at your elementary school. These parents stated that your notes were angry, aggressive, and even defamatory. As the students and parents were persons of color, you were disturbed that as a white woman, some would view your sending the notes as racially motivated. The second incident of concern involved neighbors in your condominium who were persons of color. You asked your neighbors to properly dispose of the dog's waste and reported it to your homeowners association. You stated that your neighbors implied that you may hold a racial bias against them. When I asked you what you thought about my being from a different culture from yours, you stated that you have apprehensions about me being a therapist who is a person of color and that you are worried that I may hold a racial bias against you, particularly because of these two incidents. You stated that you did not want a therapist who would think of you as a racist person due to what you believe were two misunderstandings. Two misunderstandings. I understand that you believe that this would seriously obstruct our therapeutic alliance. I am a multicultural therapist. As such, I advocate for awareness, respect, and appreciation for cultural diversity. I acknowledge the presence of diverse worldviews where each culture, including yours, is unique and dynamic and needs to be understood within its own context. I know that being understood is important to healing, and to be effective, I need to understand your worldview as a white person. As a multicultural therapist, I always ask myself, how can I understand the life can I understand of a culturally life different life culturally different life. This means that I will go through the process of exploring my own beliefs, values, and attitudes toward my own culture, as well as my attitudes toward yours. I would like to have a dialogue with you on our cultural differences and our similarities. Recognize that you are an individual who may be quite different from other members of your race. Consider how our cultural differences may affect our therapeutic relationship and acknowledge how power, privilege, and race can affect that relationship. The first exercise we will engage in is the creation of your genogram. This is a family therapy tool in which we will create a genealogical tree 
highlighting your nuclear and extended family dynamics. This diagram helps me place you within your communal context. Your communal context. We'll begin with a cultural genogram of three or more generations of ancestors. I'll create my own and we can compare them with each other. In maintaining an open and transparent dialogue with you about our cultural differences and similarities, I hope to engender an understanding between us that will allow us to see each other within our cultural context and help ensure that cultural bias does not obstruct our therapeutic alliance. Blessings. Bless Julian. Bless Julian. Bless Julian. Hello, Janet. Hello, Janet. I wonder if you have ever heard of the philosopher Gloria Ansaldúa. She was a feminist, Chicana theorist, as a queer woman. She is something of a hero to generations of people who occupy the in-between areas. In -between areas. You might be wondering how this relates to you. I know that you are not queer or Chicana. And perhaps you do not even identify as a feminist. Yet the crux of her work was on the subject of liminality and how people deal with the challenges presented by these spaces. It is so easy for us to become inundated with our thoughts, our emotions, our obligations and expectations. To steel ourselves against the powerful force of overwhelm we need tools. I'm suggesting to you that one force that can defeat overwhelm is ambiguity. Ansel Dua once said, I am an act of needing, of uniting and joining that not only produced both a creature of darkness and a creature of light, but also a creature that questions the definitions of light and dark and gives them and gives them this is an apt metaphor for how we can address the many facets of your story and your identity. It is a mistake to believe that any one person is monolithic. We all carry with us struggle and complexity. Ansaldua also talks about creating your own culture, one that is defined by you, to help you survive and navigate a society that wasn't ready for you. It is said that healing occurs in the community, and I believe this. This is why I would like to suggest a woman's group for you. I will research options, and I believe that sharing your journey with a group will be of mutual benefit. You will have the opportunity to share your wisdom and experience while also learning new skills and building a circle of support around you. Another thing Ansel Dua spoke of was Mestiza consciousness, which is a survival strategy. In her case, for someone too native for Mexicans, too Mexican for white Americans, and finally too female and too queer for any group. As a mestiza, she said, I have no country. I have no country. My homeland cast me, me out. Cast me Yet out. all countries are mine, because I am every woman's sister or potential lover. As a lesbian, I have no race. My own people disclaim me. But I am all races, because there is the queer of me in all races. I am cultureless, because I am a feminist. I challenge the collective cultural, religious, male-derived beliefs of the Indo-Hispanics and the Anglo. Yet I am cultured, because I am participating in the creation of yet another culture. Perhaps you feel cast out of your home. These things can push you into a liminal space. But in this space, there is freedom, there is freedom. and potential. She goes on to say that the new mestiza copes by developing a tolerance for contradictions, for ambiguity. She learns to juggle cultures. I'm here to tell you that there is no specific way to show up in this world in order to deserve respect and the reason I share all this with you is because I feel you may find relatable wisdom in some of these words. I believe that trauma often pushes us into liminal spaces. In the process of healing trauma, our perspective is expanded. Your knowledge and your experiences are expansive. I look forward to future sessions. CJ. I do feel
a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, of course I have problems romantically. That's what happens when you're treated like shit as a kid. <laughs> Meditation? I don't know. I don't know. My mind is always racing like a mile a minute. Half the time I feel like a crazy person. Half the time I feel like I am. It is my damn right to feel this way. It is my damn right to feel this way. My damn right to feel this way. Don't drive then. If you're too old, don't drive. Maybe you're done. Maybe you're done. We all have places to be. We all have shit to do. Like, <laughs> okay, well, I'm not racist. Well, I'm not racist. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. That's nonsense. Just because I want my students' parents to be more involved and just because I asked my neighbors to pick up their dog shit, how does that make me racist? Maybe I get a little worked up when I see them struggling, but it's coming from a good place. Do I see myself? Maybe. Well, I'm, I'm certainly not a racist. Definitely, I definitely don't know how I feel about having another male therapist. Can't remind me of my dad or my brother. I never feel taken seriously. I'm either crazy or I should just get over it. God, I feel more mad at my mom than anything. I feel so, so mad. Why didn't she, why didn't she get us out of there? Why didn't she? But I never felt safe. I never felt cared for. I was just told, I mean, I was practically told children should be seen and not heard. Clean up after yourself. Do this, do that. But don't make a voice. Don't talk back. To tell other people about my shit. I... Oh my god, you're kidding. I have to do reading. To go to therapy, I have to do homework. Oh. Inundated with thoughts, emotions, obligations, expectations. Always, always, always. It's just like so constricting. <sighs> there is a way that you have to be there, the right, and there's a wrong, and. God, it's so, so oppressive. How could I not be angry? I would love to feel in charge of my own goddamn life. That's true. I would love to feel in control. I, I survived. I am independent. I wish I didn't feel so. I wish I didn't feel so. Everything that she expressed is completely valid. Therapy in general is intimidating and finding the right therapy that works for you is a daunting process. Janet's responses were not particularly surprising to me because oftentimes the clients who have the biggest reactions to the idea of meditation or mindfulness are the ones who might benefit from those methods the most. Sometimes people have conceptualizations of what meditation looks like, and in reality, it might look completely different. I wasn't surprised that Janet's response to my letter was one of anger, but I don't see Janet as an angry person. I see her as misunderstood. Behind Janet's anger towards her students' parents is compassion and caring for the well-being of her students. I want Janet to channel that anger a little more constructively. When Janet is seen as a person who she knows she isn't, then she's going to feel out of control over her own life. A narrative is being written about her that she has no control over, and yet is affecting her socially as well as professionally. This makes her feel disempowered. I think Janet would definitely benefit from working in a women's group simply because part of what she discussed originally 
was that it was difficult for her to maintain friendships. And if anything, I think that being around people of similar life experience, of similar ages, might be really beneficial for her. And it might help her feel a sense of camaraderie and that she has other people around her that can share in her experiences. My hopes for Janet is that she, through the therapeutic process, will be able to develop a comfortability within her body and feel that her body is her home and feel more safe and grounded within the container of the body. I really hope that she sticks with the process and is able to sit through some discomfort so that we may build up the capacity for emotional self-regulation and a diffusion between the thoughts and the mind so that she may take a look outside of herself and not be as reactive at times. I also hope that we can work on healing the trauma that she's been through, specifically with her own body and her heart condition, trying to work through those things so that the body does feel safe to exist in. My hope for Janet is that she is able to use the concepts of liminality and ambiguity to her advantage, such that she may find a calmer space within herself, a more rational space within herself to operate from, a centered self. Also, that she is able to use these concepts of liminality and ambiguity to work through daily discomfort, to be able to make choices that are authentic to her. My hope for Janet in her initial sessions is for her to understand that I do see her and I do hear her. I want her to know that I understand and respect her as an individual. I also want her to know that I understand her cultural background. And I want Janet to understand my cultural background as well. It's through this mutual understanding that we can develop compassion for each other and for others. I really hope that she can gain a sense of self as she wants to define it, separate from what the patriarchy instills. Redefining what it means to be a woman to Janet will be very crucial to her therapeutic journey and her journey in becoming who she wants to be. Change starts, unfortunately, in this instance at a very micro level, at the individual, and you have to be willing to put in that effort for yourself for it to ever develop into something bigger.